This video is about web-based IDEs. Going to the next IDE, it is StackBlitz. Now I have been using StackBlitz a lot recently and this is what the dashboard looks like. And I use it a lot for Angular projects. You can see a lot of the projects that I built on StackBlitz are Angular. I also have a collection over here where you can fork the Angular IV15, which uses CSS, but I like to use SCSS. So I just created my one that is just already set to use SCSS. So what I do is I go into my IV15 SCSS and I just... I'm going to fork this project and call it something else like test test angular 2023 just anything and I can remove that from here because I don't want to mess up my actual template now let's have a look for emit abbreviation shortcuts and anything like that okay it does tell you empty brilliant so it does have the boilerplate i'm assuming it has everything else ul and then okay ul and then tab and it's just gonna close it li times five it does all of that let's try with lorem and get into paragraph it just has a lot of suggestions and let's do lorem times five whoop that is a lot of lorem ipsum but yes, it does support all of that. So I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't actually need it now. Let's get into the more important part, which is a TS file for Angular. You do want to see if it is going to help you import things for you. That's something that an IDE does and it saves you a lot of time. So let's try um, on init. Yep, it is suggesting it already. Now, apart from that, it's not actually adding it. So let's go with, I'm missing this already. So let's go with implements on init. Let's see if it's gonna tell me something now. Okay, it does give me quick fix. Let's see, implement. Okay, throw an error. I don't actually need this. I needed it to be just over here, but that's because we have an extra curly bracket there. Yeah, that's it. Now, that should be the class on in it and I'm missing, yeah. There we go. We have the on in it inside of the class of app component. Now let's grab um, property that I have. This dot, my username. And let's see if it gives me options. Yep, length. Okay, I can go through all of the things that I have with this property, which is pretty, pretty cool. And what I would expect an IDE to do for me to just give me suggestions of what I can do. So I'm just gonna go back because I don't need any of that. It was just to test out, but it is helping you. So something really great about StackBlitz is it does offer you file structure. So with any type of uh, JavaScript framework, Angular project, React project, you do need quite a lot of files and you can see them over here. StackBlitz also offers you a very easy way to track how current things are. It is starting you already with Angular 15. You can have a look at your package.json file. You can have a look at how things are going. You can go into your angular.json file and see what kind of styles you're loading. You just have a lot more control with it. It's just you have an idea where you are and what's going on and you see the actual project with all of its necessary and related files. I really do like that you can change the styling to SCSS even though the original project was already built to start up with SCSS I was able to switch it very easily to SCSS and that's how I have my already prepared starter project and I do have a blog post about it and I will link it if you want to use this one I'll just provide it in the description if you prefer SCSS. Now going into the Angular world I should mention the Angular CLI. Angular CLI or the Angular command line interface it's a great feature of Angular which I love and enjoy and I have been using it a lot I mean ever since I started using Angular I have been working with the CLI in terms of Angular CLI support. Now let's open up the 
angular project that I already forked and I have. So this is an angular project environment. So let's just try npm install and see error it doesn't let me do that now if i come to npm install over here i can't install the angular cli now again this is the free account so i don't know if the other one has extra features i haven't explored it yet to not waste time what i do is i go back to the dashboard and instead of starting an angular project this time i'm starting a node.js project so over here i actually have a normal terminal and i don't need to deal with any unnecessary stuff now i don't have an angular app uh, but i'm just gonna start a new app now oh, but the first thing i'm gonna do is npm install in the terminal since it is node it does install it and it gives me package log.json and package.json which is pretty cool let's see if i can just do it like that yeah let's do this better so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run npm install and the usual command has global CLI, but in this case I am going to remove the global tag because I really don't need it. Now on your desktop IDE global would mean globally on your machine so it would affect all of your files that you're opening with your desktop IDE. Here because it is a web-based IDE global it doesn't have the same sense and they actually removed it. On a video where I was using stack blitz before I was actually laughing about global because really global makes no sense when it comes to web-based environment. So I hit enter and I'm waiting for it to install the Angular CLI. It's pretty fast actually, it doesn't take a long time. And so now I can use the ng command. It should be recognized as an Angular CLI command and do new. Let's call it test app 2020, test app 2023. And one important thing is I do like to set my style to SCSS from the get go. So I add in style equals SCSS. I think that was it. Would you like to add Angular routing? Oh, of course. And it is building my Angular app. Now it is giving you a message that I, if I want to add in more files and like images, I got to pay extra, but I don't need to pay attention to this right now because I am just building a simple Angular app and just want to see how things are set up for me. So it is for the purpose of testing. Now I do have my Angular app over here with everything that I might possibly need in it. And I don't think that I need to run anything extra to test if the Angular CLI is working because if I'm <laughs> building a whole app, then it means that Angular CLI is working. But let's just go um, into test app just in case, cd into source and cd into app. And let's do control to clear the terminal. No, I just want to print the working directory just to make sure that I'm where I want to be. Okay, and then we do ng generate components, but I'm going to put it in a folder components and it's going to be called hello <laughs> world. Yeah, very creative, I know, but like I just want to see if it's going to get it. Okay, so I have the folder components, I have hello world. Okay, let's get out of here and out of here and let's run npm start. And now it is uh, generating my app with npm start and I have my visual. Again, this is pretty important when it comes to the front end that you have your visual with real time updates. So let's just have a look at the real time updates. We're just gonna get rid of all of that pretty much. Sorry, Angular, but that is just for the purpose of testing and compile successfully. And let's try H1. I'm going to call it Angular App Works. And save it. Angular App Works. Okay, now let's just for the sake of it have a look and see if I have set up my SCSS to work. Okay, I just want to give it a test. So, what do we have? We have H1, was it? Yeah, again, H1, H1. We give it a color of, say, aqua. 
Okay, and let's just see if I can nest the roll inside of here and give, okay, now nice. This one is actually giving me more suggestions. And on hover, let's try a cursor. A cursor of pointer, it should be here. Okay, I'm just gonna pointer. Okay, and I'm gonna save it and you can see over here it keeps recompiling on every save and I do have a cursor as pointer so in terms of angular stack blitz does give me pretty much everything that I want if I do want to have the CLI though I am gonna start a node project but still run an angular app inside of that node project so it is still pretty cool and I have my visual output in real time so yeah, that's that's very nice. And another thing about stack blitz and why it is so popular is because whenever you look for something to be built in Angular, you will see a bunch of results with stack blitz examples. I would definitely say that the way I see it, it is best for JavaScript frameworks. In my case, Angular, I haven't actually used it with React Review, but I'm pretty happy with stack blitz and Angular. Now in terms of integration, I can very easily connect a repo to this project if I wanted to. It'll just open up a pop-up for me. You're logged in with GitHub and whatever, whatever, but I don't want to do that actually at the moment. So very, very easy GitHub integration. Now in terms of embedding it to hash node, it doesn't actually offer a native embed, like you can't select it from over here, you don't see stack blitz, but I do have a blog post about embedding it because I have it over here. And yes, this is the embedded stack blitz. So yes, you can embed it with a hash node, just uh, requires maybe like an extra step and it's not natively built in. Mm -hmm.